Hello, everyone. Every day, I have to repair a lot of electronic devices. Unfortunately, the soldering station that I regularly use has broken. This is a station I built myself about five years ago. It uses a T12 soldering tip with a laptop adapter inside, but the power is quite low and can no longer meet my needs. After thoroughly researching the soldering stations available on the market, I decided to buy a new one for myself. This is a DWS 200 soldering station from the Finerci brand, a major brand from China. They produce a wide range of tools, such as multimeters, oscilloscopes, soldering stations, etc. All of their products are of very high quality and are trusted by many users. Inside the box, you'll find the soldering station and a variety of accompanying tools. There's a very thick user manual, and I recommend that you read it carefully. This soldering station has many functions and will be difficult to use proficiently without thoroughly reading the instructions. Next, there's the soldering stand and a very sleek black soldering station, all carefully placed in thick padding to prevent damage during shipping. Additionally, there are many small accessories, such as two clamps to help easily solder small circuits, a 2 and 20 volt power cord, numerous soldering tips in various shapes, and even two soldering irons for handling different tasks. First, I will disassemble this soldering station to see what's inside. Uh, beneath the four rubber pads are four hidden screws. By simply removing these four screws, we can easily take apart the soldering station. It can be seen that this soldering station is divided into two parts. The bottom contains a switching power supply module, which, based on my experience, has a power output of about 300 watts. The upper part houses the control circuit, display, and control buttons. These two sections are connected by a cable. This is the power module of the soldering station. It uses a flyback topology, which allows for a wide operating voltage range from 110 volts to 250 volts. Uh, you can use it with any power outlet around the world. We can see that it has a fairly large switching transformer, a main MOSFET rated for 20 amp mounted on a heatsink, and a UC3843 control IC. This power module can easily provide up to 300 watts of pattern input voltage of 220 volts. On the back of the soldering station, we have a 220 volt power jack a power switch, a USB Type-C port, and a connector for the soldering stand. This is a unique feature of this station. When you place the soldering iron on the stand, the station immediately goes into sleep mode. When you lift the soldering iron with a power output of up to 200 watts, the heating speed is incredibly fast, allowing you to use it almost instantly. Next, I will disassemble the control module. The control module uses an STM32 chip from ST, which provides very fast processing speed. Next to it is a buck converter circuit that steps down the voltage from 24 volts to 5 volts to power the microcontroller and the display. Additionally, it features a low noise op amp and a high power P-channel MOSFET. The op amp amplifies the voltage received from the sensor of the soldering tip and sends the signal to the microcontroller. The microcontroller then controls the MOSFET using a PID algorithm. 
This allows the soldering tip to heat up very quickly and maintain a highly stable temperature. After connecting the soldering iron, we just need to press the power button to turn on the soldering station. As you can see, it takes only about two seconds for the soldering tip to reach the maximum temperature of 450 degrees. When you're done soldering, simply place the soldering iron on the stand and the station will enter sleep mode. When you need to use it again, just lift the soldering iron and you can start working immediately. This feature is truly amazing. You can also press the mode button to switch to a graphical display mode. In this mode, you can monitor the temperature and power curve. However, to be honest, I prefer using it in the normal mode. Next are the settings for this soldering station, all of which are explained in great detail in the user manual. One of the settings is the temperature step adjustment. For example, if you set the temperature step to 10 degrees Celsius, when you press the increase or decrease button, the temperature will change by 10 units. It is recommended to set this value to 10. On the next page, you can set the sleep temperature and the idle time before the soldering station turns off. I usually set the sleep temperature to 150 degrees Celsius and the idle time to five minutes. The next page allows you to set shortcut keys. You can assign three temperature levels that you frequently use. Simply press the selection button and you can instantly switch to these preset temperatures. The next page is for temperature calibration. You'll need an accurate thermometer to start the calibration process. Generally, we don't use this function often. Additionally, you can adjust the screen brightness and the speaker volume on the following page. Here I've plugged the soldering station into a watt meter. You can see that in standby mode, it only consumes one watts. You can leave it plugged in continuously without worrying about high power consumption. Once the soldering station reaches the set temperature, it only consumes less than 20 watts to maintain that temperature, making it very energy efficient. Uh, next, I will test the maximum power output of this soldering station by dipping the soldering tip into a cup of water. First, I will try with the C245 tip. You can see the power consumption reaching up to 200 watts, exactly as specified by the manufacturer. Next, I'll switch to a smaller soldering tip, the C210. This tip is suitable for smaller components, such as those found in mobile phones. 
Despite the C210 tip being very small, it still consumes up to 80 watts of power, which explains why the soldering station can reach its maximum temperature in just two seconds. If those tests haven't convinced you yet, take a look at this experiment. Here I have a 0.3 millimeter thick copper strip clamped between two large aluminum heat sinks. My previous soldering iron struggled with this test, but with the DWS 200 soldering station, it's effortless. It easily melts 16 strands of solder. It's truly impressive. You can even use the DWS 200 to solder lithium battery terminals, taking just two seconds for each connection. The battery doesn't even get warm in the process. Uh, after all the tests, I can confidently say that this is the best soldering station I've ever had. It fully meets my repair needs. If you're considering buying a new soldering station, don't overlook this one.